As the title of this video indicates, this series is about the repair of an ADM3, but of course this is not an ADM3 terminal. Um, I carry out a lot more repairs than I video, and um, this is a, uh, an old TV as you can see, and I purchased this for a different project, the intention was to restore this. I wasn't going to make any videos uh, on it, but uh, unfortunately in transit it was packed very badly and uh, the case has been damaged kind of beyond repair now um, there's no point in me trying to restore this there were chunks of the case actually missing as I say just badly packaged and this happens quite a lot it's uh, unfortunate and um, it's uh, kind of spelt the end for this particular uh, piece of equipment so there's no point in me trying to restore this but one thing um, I thought uh, is maybe I could use the tube out of this to repair the ADM3 if you watched the previous video on the ADM3, you'll know that the tube is uh, destroyed, the neck's been broken off it, and um, trying to get hold of a, a new tube for that in the UK is very difficult. You seem to be able to get them in the US, they're not cheap, but at least you can get them. Um, but the shipping to the UK is uh, horrendously expensive and it uh, makes it impractical to try and get one from the US. Um, but I don't know if the tube actually works in this. This was sold as not working, so the intention was to repair this. And as I said, I wasn't going to make any videos on this, but I thought what we'd do in this video is uh, a bit of a, um, a sidetrack uh, video. We'll have a look at this. Um, I'll take the back off, we'll power it up. We'll see if we can get anything on the screen and uh, try and prove whether this tube is viable. And if it is, we'll see if it will be possible to fit it into the ADM3. I suspect the mounting will be completely different. The ADM3 has got uh, custom uh, mechanical mounts, but uh, we'll look at that later. First thing is I'll get the back off and we'll see if we can get any life out of this old TV. I've removed the screws from the back cover, so we'll see if we can get this off. Okay, well at least the tube itself seems to be intact and uh, if you're interested this is a model TV 130-2 and um, I'm not sure why there's so many tags in this obviously some sort of control system they had um, quite interesting a typical um, internal for the time just lower the lights here so you can see this a bit better So really it's a single board, uh, a power supply up here, but a single board and um, this was built at a time when uh, TVs were kind of coming to the end of their uh, natural life. Uh, the uh, general build quality was starting to go downhill, everything was being uh, made down to a, uh, a budget, to a cost. They were getting cheaper and cheaper and everything was becoming integrated so the entire TV system was moving towards uh, integrated ICs where all the TV functions were uh, being consolidated and put into fewer components. Okay, You can see this has had uh, a fairly rough life, although it's got a, a floating um, chassis, this is, this is all bent. So what you can do with these is just slacken off these two uh, wing nuts and then this entire um, bottom uh, board assembly, this tray will slide out and you can get access to it all. So let's get the rear out of the way. We'll loosen these two. Okay, we should now be able to slide this out. Okay, so as you can see, it's very dirty and um, what I'm going to do, I, I won't do too much of this on camera, I'm just going to very quickly uh, see if we can go through and test the CRT. Um, what I'm going to do is just go through the usual fault finding for a, a set like this. Um, most likely it's a fault with either the power supply or the uh, line output or line output uh, driver. And um, what we can then do is try and power it up. It was sold as uh, not working completely dead. Um, so we'll see what we can find and if we can get some life out of the tube then we will hopefully be able to use that in our ADM3. So I'll have a quick look at this. Um, as I say, I won't do too much on camera with this. It's just a very quick um, check to see if this tube works. This set will actually run from a 12 volt supply. So just to make things easier, I've uh, hooked up the 12 volt uh, supply input to my 01 bench supply, set to 12 volts, one amp. 
So we'll try and power that up and see if we get any life out of the set. Um, it's an old set, so, so effectively if we get anything, um, I've got the volume turned all the way up so we should hear something through the speaker, which is up here, you can't see it. Um, but we should be able to hear something if there's any life at all, even if it's only a few cracks and pops uh, as uh, uh, I move the volume controls. We'll get this powered up. And it's drawing zero current. So there's no power being drawn by this set at all. And so we've got two fuses. We've got one on the mains input, which is not connected to anything. I've got the uh, mains uh, power lead disconnected. And the other one says T 2.5 amps, which is going to be for the 12 volt supply. So we'll turn that back off, grab the multimeter. Okay, I've got the power turned off. We'll do a quick check across the fuse holder. Getting a high resistance, so I'll do a check across the fuse itself. Hopefully you can see the meter. And the fuse reads good, so it's like we've just got a dodgy fuse holder. So yeah, the fuse is just loose in there. So I'll tighten that up and we'll try and power it up again and see what happens. Okay, I've tightened the uh, fuse holder up, we'll try and power it up, see what happens. Let's turn the volume down there a bit. Okay, now there's nothing on the screen. A few minutes poking around in the line output stage, I found a shorted capacitor, so I've replaced that. And um, I can't find any of the shorts, I've just gone through the line output stage, there's not many components in there. Um, but we'll try and power this back up and see if we get anything uh, showing on the screen this time. Okay, now you can't see it, but I'm getting a glow on the heater. And we are getting a display, so that's good news. It means the tube itself is working fine. Uh, whether this will be any good or not for the ADM is debatable. It kind of depends on whether or not we can uh, make it work sensibly for uh, that particular uh, physical arrangement really. It's, it's trying to get it to physically fit. Uh, of course we're not getting anything on the uh, screen in terms of an image. There's no terrestrial TV anymore so we can't pick anything up. Um, but judging by the way this is responding as I turn the tuning dials it looks like this is probably actually working. So let's try poking at it with a stick and we'll see if we can get it to respond at all and it does actually change the picture slightly when I touch the uh, antenna input so more than likely this is actually now working it would just need the contacts and the controls cleaning uh, but unfortunately the case is destroyed so really beyond repair so um, I'm now going to use this as a donor uh, for the CRT. So what we'll do in the next video is I'll strip this down completely to turn it off I'll strip this down completely, get the tube out of it, and we'll see if it's possible to uh, physically fit this tube into the ADM3. And if it is, and it looks like a good fit, then that will be a possible solution for getting the ADM3 working. This is also possibly a shorter tube, so uh, the only downside with this is we might not be able to get enough drive out of the uh, ADM3 uh, CRT output to get a proper deflection on this. Uh, but we'll give it a go, we'll see what we can uh, get working, and uh, we'll go from there. Well, as you can see, the tube does fit fairly comfortably against the front face of the ADM3 terminal uh, upper cover. It's a very nice fit. I can't show you it from the front because there's nothing holding the tube in place at the moment. Um, but the curve is uh, a very nice fit and it's the right uh, size and shape. I would need to come up with some mounting methods. It might be possible to uh, reuse the uh, custom mounts that are on the original tube, which of course I've taken out. Um, but that's only half the problem. We now need to see if this tube uh, can be kind of shoehorned into the drive electronics for the ADM3. Uh, the tube might be completely unsuitable. It's a much uh, higher uh, deflection angle for a star, so it will require a much higher uh, drive for the deflection. Um, also the, the focus and the EHT might be uh, beyond the capability of the ADM3 but it'll be fun finding out 
Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is try and find the spec uh, for this particular tube. Uh, if you're interested, the number that's on it uh, is kind of hard to read. It's like it's uh, kind of a Russian um, number, but it seems to say 31NK35. Um, it's not a tube I'm familiar with. It's not a number I've seen before. Um, but what I can also do is look at the uh, voltages supplied by the uh, small black and white TV and then go from there and find uh, a way hopefully to get the uh, ADM3 circuitry to provide the required drive. If not, I'll have to carry on hunting for a replacement tube, but uh, the idea is to get this ADM3 working. It is the unusual one, it's got the odd um, upgrade board, it's got this board in it, so it's not um, a typical ADM3. I'm not really trying to restore this to its um, kind of former glory and, and keep it original, I'm just trying to get it working uh, because it will be quite an interesting uh, project to try and get uh, this tube into the ADM3. Um, so in the next video I'll look at, I'm not going to try, uh, I'll go to all the time and trouble of trying to uh, make up a mount for this yet, the next step will be to uh, hook this up to the ADM3 uh, drive electronics. We'll try and drive it through some um, signal generators, which you've seen me do before. And uh, if we can get it working uh, that way, we might have to modify the interface board. But if we can get it working, we can then get back on track, make up some mechanical mounts to get this uh, bolted into the case, and then get on with the repair of the main board. Just a quick word of uh, caution here, um, don't mess with CRTs unless you know what you're doing. They can be very dangerous if you snap the neck off or break them, uh, they can implode and uh, these uh, have got quite a lot of fairly heavy glass in them that will be moving at very high speed if that happens and uh, can be extremely dangerous. Also these are effectively a very high voltage capacitor so even though this has been off for a while now and I've kind of grounded the um, EHT connection several times, it's still quite possible that there is either high voltage uh, still uh, built up in the tube itself uh, or even on the uh, drive board. So just be careful if you're doing this. Um, also, if you're going to take a tube out of a piece of equipment and put it in something else, uh, make sure that there's a, uh, an implosion screen somewhere in the system so in the ADM3, the original tube, um, you may have seen my video on uh, getting rid of cataracts on a, an ADM3 tube, and you remove the front implosion guard, so the cataracts are actually in the, the uh, bonding adhesive between the front guard and the tube itself, because the, the original tubes do not have an integral implosion guard, which is basically a toughened piece of glass that sits in front of the tube. So it's actually uh, a separate one that's glued on the front. Um, Newer tubes like this one actually have it built directly into the front face, so it's not a separate uh, piece. Um, but just make sure it is somewhere. If you take it out of a piece of equipment, some old equipment, uh, the guard is actually on the case of the machine and the tube doesn't have one, so it's uh, very much weaker. And if they do implode, there's nothing to stop the glass going forwards. So just uh, be aware of that and make sure that you do have uh, a guard somewhere in the system.